today I'm going to be telling you about the three books that I read in the first half of April. The most recent one that I read is Bride of the Unicorn by Casey Michaels, and this is a historical fiction slash romance-ish um, featuring a dude who is trying to pass off this orphan girl he meets as this long-lost heiress, and it turns out that she really is the long-lost heiress. So I liked reading this book, it was fun to read, and it was really well-researched and everything, but the love story that plays a huge part of this book, I just did not buy it at all. So basically the first um, 100 pages go by without any inkling of a love story at all and then when it shows up on like page 109 or so it comes out of nowhere and like yeah it just made like no sense to me and also there are about maybe five sex scenes in this and they are so they're actually really terrible they're just so wordy and metaphorical that you really can't tell what the heck they're doing all of like the wrong gross words were used i'm the type of person who um used to skip sex scenes if they were too long um and then when i read outlander i um stopped skipping sex scenes anymore because the those scenes in that book were so well written that like like that book was just written so well that even the sex scenes were written really well and I and I really liked reading them so then from that day forward I never skipped a sex scene again but then this book made me skip a sex scene because it just just the way that they were written was just horrible this book is not bad at all like I'd still recommend it if you want like some light fluffy thing to read um and everything and then also but also one more thing too is that I feel like um, the fact that the girl really is the long-lost heiress is practically given to you even if you don't read the back of the book that basically says that she is when she first shows up it's practically given to you um, so I think it would have been a lot cooler if the way that they meet was different so that we we as readers really had no idea that that was going to happen that then it could be like a cool plot twist but nope they didn't want to do that in this book I don't know um, and then also the way that she finds out that she's the long lost heiress is that she just suddenly remembers some stuff from when she was a baby and that made no sense to me I felt like that just happened way too quickly and it was just way too convenient so it had this really annoying epilogue that takes place like two years later which I felt did not add anything at all and I feel like I would rather that the epilogue just um, deal with the immediate aftermath of the last chapter or something like that instead. Before that, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and this is, in case you don't know, a book about a girl who sees one of her really good friends um, get shot by a white police officer um, for doing absolutely nothing. I really love the way that this book um, kind of puts a lot of that stuff in perspective. It puts police brutality in perspective, um, for sure, because, I mean, that ha that seems to happen a lot. We always hear in the news about some black guy who was sitting in his, in his car, like, reading a book, and he got shot because a police officer, like, thought that the book was a gun. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're a police officer, um, and you've been, and you've had your life, like, threatened before, um, like, yeah, it makes sense that, that you'd kind of jump to conclusions, but it's like, if that dude were white, would you, would you have shot him, like, and asked questions later, just even though he was sitting in his car? Like, I don't think so. And also, I feel like this book painted the, the best, like, most informative picture of gang violence that I've ever read about. The Portland area has a huge gang violence problem, but since I have never been involved in a gang or any, or I don't, and I don't know anyone who has, like, I have no idea. I'm completely unaware of how that stuff goes down. So I feel like this book just um, did a really good job of talking about all of that. And I also love that there's a friendship breakup between the main character star and, like, a friend of hers who just does not get it at all. Um, and like even though um, obviously Star's really close friend from childhood was like shot um, this girl is like well at least there's one one less drug dealer in the world and I feel like yeah she was like that character was a little bit over the top um, with how mean she was being um, without and like supposedly not realizing that she was mean and just being a hater but um 
But I love that that kind of corner of the story where Star is like not sure if she wants to be friends with her anymore and how their friendship is based on like um, all the good memories they've had because they've been friends since middle school. And so I always find it really refreshing refreshing um, <laughs> when a story features like a friendship breakup because I just find that, I don't know, because that happens in real life tons of times to everybody. The first book that I read this month, I read because... Um, I got pretty sick. I was sick for like a week or two and I really did not feel like reading, but um, sometimes rereading Harry Potter can really help you with that. So I reread Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And basically, um, I think this might actually be the first time I've ever reread this book, um, like since it came out. Um, so I definitely, there was definitely a lot that I didn't remember from it. And so I, um, I loved seeing all the, all this detail about, like, why Barty Crouch Jr. went to Azkaban and, um, how he got out of there and all these other details that just were not in the movie or anything. Um, and then also there was this part that really cracked me up where, um, Hagrid is greeting the, uh, Madame Maxime lady. And, um, and he, like, shows up at her door and says, Bong Sewer! Like, obviously he meant Bonsoir, but it's like, um, it's like, Hagrid knocked on Madame Maxine's door. Bong Sewer, he said. So these are the books that I read in the month, in this first half of the month of April. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye!